Good morning, folks. We've got earthquake news, a review of moisture transport in the atmosphere, a paper helping to describe why blot echo forecasting works, and a solar wind intensification forecast for the next few days. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star had a couple surface pops, but nothing really resembling eruptive activity. Big coronal hole still turning across center disk today, and as you might guess from the calm you see there, solar flaring remains incredibly low. We may see some life breathed into it today, however, as a couple sunspots were born in the last 12 hours. They could easily dissipate, but if they don't, the southern grouping has a nice beta-class lateral spread. Solar wind here. Orange saw a little rise up, that's the density, and then as it dropped out, the faster streams came as the purple line rises. That's the lead coronal hole that turned out of view already, and it's not doing much. No wonder its IMF had little quake effects. Good news is that the Cosmic Ray Health Alert is over with its impact. It's a recovery day. But with the largest bulk mass of the coronal hole facing us now, it's only about two to three days until the faster streams from that one arrive. Expect those to be much faster. So folks, after yesterday's major quake struck Papua New Guinea, we declined to formally analyze that region. The white oval, as many times a seven-pointer in that region, will destabilize a wide area. Kind of tough to decide what's going to happen. Well, in addition to aftershocks there, we did have a nice blot echo event overnight, so anyone who was awake and caught this, well done. And 5.7 is actually a questionable call given the number of 6-plus readings and the maximum magnitudes. That one may get upgraded. And I'd also like to revisit that less important Hawaii call. Remember, they were expected to outdo a month's worth of quaking, in only four days. The max during that time it only hit 3.3 and in only two days of this minor watch they've already got two in excess of that magnitude. Again, not a scary thing, just scientifically relevant. Sticking with the topic, great article out about the fault structure beneath Japan. There are three fluid-rich convective channels running to the low-velocity zone under the island nation with very low resistivity. If you're keeping up with the premium content at suspiciousobservers.org, you just had a wake-up moment. The last two blot episodes of Deeper Look discuss this exact thing, the fluid in the convective channels within highly conductive fault zones. That paper is why we can predict 70% of Japan's big quakes. We also discussed the topic a bit on Fly on the Wall yesterday as we ran down some quake forecasting tips and more information about the Disaster Prediction app. Interesting story we had on Ceres as well about water transport and it turns out to be similar to Earth's despite its lack of an atmosphere. Here on Earth, the red and purple low-pressure Earth spots suck tropical moisture away from the equator and into their systems, ionizing and exciting and condensing it into clouds that then drop the rain as the Earth spots track across the planet. Space weather, a little history of how the mainstream has looked at solar forcing, why that didn't work, a few hundred of the best papers on that topic, climate change, technology, human health, and earthquakes. We can all learn a little something from the sun. Link is found below on this page and also at suspiciousobservers.org and spaceweathernews.com. We'll roll into pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.